Hey, let's talk about Mario Odyssey. It's a 10 out of 10 game. There's your review. Just go out, play it, just do it. Mario Odyssey is by far one of my favorite Mario games because it really captures what it feels like to play a 3D Mario game. And specifically, Odyssey feels like a very, very uh, satisfying continuation of the formula created by Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine. It really feels like the apex of Mario. So with that little introduction out of the way, let's get into the pros. So in general, the moons I think are a really good collectible, but then you beat the game. And I think the, the market gets a little oversaturated, you know? Because on the one hand, before you beat the game, there's enough moons everywhere that you never have to do a moon that wouldn't be fun. There's a lot of easy moons, there's a lot of medium difficulty moons, and there's some hard moons. And honestly, it always felt like if you see a moon, oh, I'm just gonna go grab it, that, that, that's, that's fun. But then after you beat the game, it honestly really feels like a, a chore to do. Like, it's not very enjoyable because there's just too many moons. But I'm gonna get into that later in the video. Something else in this game that's pretty good is progression is linear, but also it isn't, if that makes sense. Like, what I mean to say by that is, uh, as you go from kingdom to kingdom, the order you access the kingdoms in are in a fixed order, with some exception. Where it gets a little non-linear are the moons inside the kingdom, which kind of goes back into why I like moons so much. Because you can get them in whatever order you want. You know, it doesn't matter if you just want to like speedrun it and get the boss moon as fast as you can, or if you just want to like mess around and uh, get some of the easiest moons in there. It's just fun. It's fun and it's really nice being able to choose how you want to progress or at what speed you want to progress. Which is honestly just a pro. It feels like an extension of how other 3D Mario games are, especially 64. So in Mario 64, most of the paintings were in a specific order in the sense that the next door you unlock, you've required a certain amount of stars to go in there, get to the painting, and then you, the more stars you get, the more doors you could open. So there, there's an implied order there. Now when you get inside the painting, the stars were a little bit different. The stars were also kind of in a linear order, except that other stars were available from the very beginning. Now with Odyssey on the other hand, uh, it feels like the kingdoms are a bit more forced on you in the order you have to play them in, but also on the flip, the actual moons within the kingdoms offer you way more freedom. Like, you can get whatever moon in whatever order you want it. And I think that is honestly really excellent design because you're never forced to sit down and chore through a really unfun mission. So, I mean, yeah, basically it's like any other 3D Mario game, yeah. Uh, I don't know why I had a tangent about it, but yeah. Also, uh, on the matter of each and every world, I think all the kingdoms are beautiful looking. Like, some of these are just actually gorgeous. Uh, they could be like a painting. Like, uh, you know, some of my standout ones aesthetically are Wooded Kingdom, that Water Kingdom, um, the Ruin Kingdom, and the Cloud Kingdom. Another thing too about these worlds is that I think each of them are fantastically designed with a couple of exceptions. Uh, I'm specifically very fond of the uh, Metro Kingdom, which a lot of people seem to not like the design of. I think it's just kind of novel having Mario run through a city. And also some of the vertical design of it, I thought was really fun. I had a lot of fun platforming in there. I don't really know what it is, but something about that cityscape, I just really liked walking around. The Wooded Kingdom is a really fun, intricate place to explore. The one where it's a very good balance between map design and aesthetic. And same with the Luncheon Kingdom. The Luncheon Kingdom, I think, leaned more into the cool aesthetic side than the very fun platforming, but it was still a good kingdom. I really liked it. The most like disappointing thing is definitely the Ruin Kingdom and the Cloud Kingdom, in the sense that, visually speaking, these are on par with every other kingdom. I, I think they look gorgeous. But functionally, there's a lot to be desired. Like, with Ruin Kingdom and the Cloud Kingdom, they're just boss arenas. Uh, I mean, you can go back after you beat the boss, and there's about less than a dozen moons. Like, there's, in total, 18 kingdoms in the game, right? And there's 880 moons. And out of those moons, the Ruin Kingdom equates for 10 of them. That is, that's barely 1% of all the moons in the game. I would have loved to explore these places, but nope, they're just boss arenas. They're just pretty lame boss arenas. Like, come on, dude, it, it's called Cloud Kingdom. It's called the Ruin Kingdom. It's a kingdom, but there's nothing to do. I can see all the ruined, but where's the kingdom? You know what I mean? It's, it's disappointing. Yeah, like, what's the point of these kingdoms if it's just a boss arena? You could have easily put this type of boss arena in another kingdom, or you could have expanded on this kingdom. It felt very lazy. Now, that tangent aside, the kingdoms, barring those two, are all fantastic, and I had a good time playing through all of them. So getting back on track, the next really great thing in this game are the boss designs, and each boss is really, really memorable. Like, even years after playing Odyssey, 
a lot of the bosses still stick with me, and I remember them pretty well. In most worlds, there's a unique boss with a special gimmick to beat them, and for me, the gimmicks never really felt intrusive, it just made the boss stand out more. And the best part about each boss, and being kind of a gimmick fight, is that they make great use out of Cappy's abilities. So, for example, you know, you have uh, the big brutal lady. Throughout Fossil Kingdom, as you're making your way to her, you know, you start learning the cap ability, you see its potential, and then there's these chain chomps that you can use to bust down walls, you break down the walls, you make it up to the top of Fossil Kingdom, and then boom, there's this big brutal lady. Now the cool thing is, it's an evolution on what the game's been teaching you. This time, instead of being in a relatively, like, safe, calm environment with the chain chomps, it's under the circumstance of a boss fight, so it's a little more high stakes, a little more high stress and the goal is to take her chain chomp and ram it into her, just like what you've been doing this whole time. I think that is excellent design. And as much as I was like complaining about the boss arena kingdoms like Ruined and Cloud, I think the bosses in them are actually just great. Like, it is such a cool spectacle fighting a dragon in the Ruined Kingdom. Not to mention with the atmosphere there too, or the Cloud Kingdom and its Bowser fight. Both of those make for such just a fun arena. I can almost like... I can almost accept the fact that they are only used as boss arenas. Oh, and also this uh, Lunching Kingdom boss, this is a little bird. I mean, it's just got a big doofy face. I like it. It's just a funny boss, you know? I'm not an expert in boss design, but it played pretty well. It was a pretty fun boss, and it looks really funny. Also, does, uh, does Honky Kong count as a boss? Because, uh, I mean, he's here too. Also, the scene made me cry. So here's something else about the game that was kind of hard for me to put to words, and it's definitely a lot more subjective rather than objective. I think this game is just fun. It is genuinely the most fun I've had in a Mario game since I was a kid. You know, I never really felt forced to do anything or struggle through any especially hard or annoying moons. I just kind of played the game like how I wanted. And that level of freedom is just exhilarating, you know, what more could you ask for in a Mario game? This game never at any point felt like a chore, like, uh... You know, I love Sunshine, it is honestly one of my favorite Mario games. But some of those shines just weren't fun, and uh, to beat the game, long story short, in order to beat Mario Sunshine, you have to get to episode 7 of every single world, and that's just not fun, because along the way, there's some really annoying and poorly designed levels that I wasn't a fan of, and honestly, it took me, <laughs> it's because of that that I never actually beat Sunshine as a kid. It just, I don't know, it's, Sunshine had an amazing game feel, and a lot of the levels were great, but they're just, a lot of poorly designed levels that I got stuck on as a kid. Whereas in Mario Odyssey, I never really felt stuck on anything, you know? The game was a breeze to go through. Not like it was too easy, but that everything flowed together really well. Can we just talk about this soundtrack for like a minute? Because, holy crap, I, I'm in love with it. I genuinely think, in my very unmusically experienced opinion, I think it's better than Galaxies. Odyssey doesn't have the cohesion of Sunshine soundtrack in the sense that everything is tropical and vacation-y, and it doesn't have the spectacle of Galaxy being a fully orchestral soundtrack. But Odyssey's soundtrack really works. It's uh, very reminiscent of Mario 64's soundtrack in the sense that the theme of the music is the fact that there's no cohesive theme. Everything has its own unique sound and each kingdom has its own unique atmosphere and its own unique music to go with it. And while none of the songs really blend together, that's what makes them blend together, if that makes any sense. Because, you know, one minute you're listening to the relatively jazzy, city-living music of the Metro Kingdom, and now you're just in feudal Japan. I, I, that's really cool to me. There's no single idea or theme that's keeping the game chained down. And with the other games, there are definitely some standout themes and music that stick in my head, but no Mario game has gotten as many songs just stuck in my brain as Odyssey have. Like, each... Kingdom is so recognizable and so unique sounding that like, you can't help but to get it stuck in your head. It's really good music. I even went so far as to buy it on Amazon <laughs> and get it shipped to my house. Like, this is a gorgeous soundtrack. And the vocal themes too. Those, oh dude. <laughs> Those are absolutely my favorite parts of the game. And like I was saying earlier how New Donk kind of made me cry. <laughs> it's because just Jump Up Superstar really hits you, dude. It's a good song. Like, the use of just a vocal theme in a Mario game really, really fits. And I'm sure you all have heard the soundtrack at this point, but hey, take a listen to it. It's time to jump up in the air. Jump up, the air. Jump up don't be scared. Don't be scared. Jump up and your cares will soar away. And if the dark clouds are just worse, don't fear and shed a tear, cause I'll be your one-up girl. So let's all jump.
Okay, so for this next section, there's some spoilers incoming. You can jump to this timestamp that I'm gonna list down below in order to avoid it, but let's get into it. So I deliberately avoided mentioning him during the, uh, the boss fight section, but Bowser is a really, really good boss fight in this game. You know, you kind of see him going through like evolution in the two, three times you fight him, where in Cloud Kingdom, it starts off relatively simplistic. By the time you find him in the Moon Kingdom, he's suddenly got a lot more tricks up his sleeve. Uh, the best part about the Bowser fights are that they, they're pretty fast and they're incremental. So what I mean by that is, in the first fight, he has a relatively limited moveset. You just steal his hat, you punch him to death, boom. But by the second time you fight him, he has a couple more movesets in his kit. And it just adds that little extra bit of challenge that makes him a pretty satisfying boss. But this isn't the best part. This final Bowser fight leads to one of the best ending segments that I've seen in a video game. Uh, this was honestly one of the kind of like biggest holy sh** moments in uh, a video game for me. Uh, my jaw dropped when I saw it. Uh, this was just such a cool scene. Everything comes crashing down, you're laying on the floor, you see Bowser, and then it hits you. And it's like, holy sh**, he's the- I gotta play him. That, that was just so cool. <laughs> like, that was just so cool. I, I didn't expect it from playing all of Odyssey. I never thought that you'd actually capture Bowser. That was just freaking cool. Because of how it leads to this ending sequence, Bowser is one of my favorite bosses in this game. Another pro, Harriet. Anyways, moving on. Hey, let's talk about some cons in this game. Uh, one of the first cons that kind of hit me while playing this game are that the controls feel tight and they're a little too tight. Uh, specifically what I mean by that is the dive. That's really what got me down because in Mario Sunshine and uh, 64, those are just good feeling dives. But in this game, it's always consistent and it's at a very strict trajectory and I don't like how that feels. It feels weird to me. Now it makes sense because one of the main features of this game is jumping, throwing Cappy, diving into him, jumping, and then diving again. So you can, it gives you a lot of movement opportunities. The cost of that though is the fact that the dive just feels significantly neutered from how it did in Sunshine. The cap jump combo is cool and all, but like, shoot, I missed that old dive. So like I was kind of hitting at earlier, the moons, as much of a boon as they are, they're also kind of a bane to this game. Because you know, the amount of moons offers you a lot of freedom and flexibility into choosing how you want to play this game. But that's kind of the problem. There's just too many. It gets really, really uh, unfun. And it starts feeling like a chore. Like you only need 124 moons to beat the game, but then there's 880. And I think flexibility is good. Uh, again, I was praising the game for it because you get to play the game how you want to, but 880 is just overkill. Like genuinely, the amount of moons that are on the game before you beat it and before you open up the moon cubes, I think that's perfect. That, that's very, that was a very satisfying amount for me. And I would not have minded collecting all of them. But then when I beat the game and I saw that there's even more moons to get, I lost my will to <laughs> complete the game. I had no desire whatsoever. Yeah, I got enough moons to get to darker side. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm done with the game. Like just seeing those boxes, those moon boxes appear after the game, that was just kind of soul crushing to me. Also, it doesn't help that the completion bonus, like with a lot of Mario games is pretty lame. Like, it's definitely a hell of a lot better than Sunshine, but it leaves a little room to be desired. Holy shit, it goes from piss yellow to shit gold. And some of the moon designs are just so incredibly asinine. It just, it hurts me, dude, it hurts me. Like there is this pro ZD video where, you know, you watch it, you think it's a joke, but it's real. It's not a joke, man. Other moons in the game too are just so painfully repetitive. I just didn't feel the urge to even want to try them. Okay, literally, who likes the seed moons? Is there anybody that actually genuinely enjoyed the seed moons? I, I did one of them and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna avoid these whenever I see it. The seed moons suck. Those are, I think that's my least favorite type of moon in this game. I hate them so much. I haven't bothered to complete any more of them. I did one and I was satisfied. And even doing that one was annoying. There's also the sheep herding moons too. Those aren't fun. Uh, the, those long point A to point B moons, I hate them. I think they're really, really poorly designed. And I mean, thank goodness there's so many moons in the game because I got to beat the game and I got to get to darker side without having to do them. Also, there's the stupid picture moons. What do they mean? What do these shapes and colors mean? I don't get it. There's also a few more moon categories that are in a similar unfun vein, but you get the point. Yeah, it's really unfortunate because, you know, on the one hand, there's so many moons that you never really have to do a sucky moon. But on the other hand, there's so many moons that you'll never want to 100% this game, which is a shame. 
it annoys just the snot out of me that there's about 600 other moons that I'm missing. Uh, the next problem is, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I, I kind of like this game a lot. I don't have a lot of negative to say about it. I mean, the game feels like shit on a GameCube controller, 0 out of 10. Also, Sunshine will always be the best Mario game. <laughs> hey, so I'm trying a slightly different video style for once. If you like it, be sure to let me know by hitting the like button and uh, dropping a comment. And if you've made it this far, just subscribe already. Like, <laughs> just do it, dude. You've made it to the end, come on. Anyways, thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.